Hi everyone, thanks for listening to my presentations. Today I'll be talking about end-stage renal disease. End-stage renal disease. Some call it end-stage kidney disease. It's all the same. Okay, sit back. Let's go. Before now, if you check my channel, you will find presentation on acute kidney injury, otherwise known as acute renal failure also on chronic kidney disease but we have now reached the last stage end stage renal disease that is determined by estimated global refutation rate of less than 15 mil per minute by 1.73 meter square and some call it stage 5 of chronic kidney disease which is the exact figure here this occurs when a gradual loss of kidney function, that is chronic kidney disease, reaches an advanced stage, that is stage five of chronic kidney disease. The kidneys can't meet the body's needs any longer. So we'll be dealing with fluid retention, also with waste and electrolyzed retention. What are the possible symptoms? Like I said, glomerular filtration rate will drop. Some even give a value between 10 to 15 mL per minute per 1.73 mL square in some literature. But, however, the glomerular filtration rate is horribly low, lower than 15 mL per minute. Then you can be dealing with high blood pressure, generalized edema, otherwise known as anasaka, itching, Bleeding from rhemia, pulmonary edema leading to cough or and shortness of breath, pericardial effusion giving us chest pain, muscle cramps, muscle twitches, or myoclonic jars from rhemia or the opioids that you be administering. Other parts of the symptoms will be decreased level of consciousness, loss of appetite fatigue or weakness, nausea, mating, constipation, and delirium. What are the possible causes? If you check my channel, you're going to find a separate presentation on all causes of renal failure, from pre-renal to renal and post-renal. The same is applicable here. So if you check that, then you don't need to listen to this, but if you not, you can have a quick recap here. Abtention, diabetes mellitus with diabetes nephropathy, glomerulonephritis, interstitial nephritis, polycystic kidney disease or vesicle retral reflux, might be pyelonephritis and can be a progression of acute kidney injury, otherwise known as acute renal failure to chronic kidney disease or chronic renal failure now leading to end-stage renal disease or end-stage kidney disease. What are the possible risk factors? Male, that doesn't mean female can have it, but more males are down with it. Older age, blacks, among African Americans, acute kidney injury, pro progressing to a chronic kidney disease polycystic kidney disease, low estimated glomerular filtration rate, diabetic mellitus nephropathy, sickle cell disease, malaria nephropathy in the tropics. Still on risk factors, kidney disease in kidney transplant, street drugs, smoking, persistent analgesic nephropathy, nephrotoxic medications, obesity and of course some certain stuff we're taking that is our diet diagnosis using the values of estimated glomerular filtration rate in males per minute we can stage kidney disease as g1 to g5 with g5 being the end stage renal disease you can pause and look at them, or if you want details of all this G1 to G5, you can check my 
publication or presentation on chronic kidney disease. So let me go straight to G5. That is when estimated glomerular filtration rate is less than 15 mL per minute by 1.73 meters square. That is end stage renal disease. But if you're going to go by the interpretation, G1 is normal, G2 and G3A is a mild situation when it comes to kidney injury or renal failure. 3B is moderate, G4 is severe, while G5, that is where we are today, end stage renal disease, is kidney failure that will need dialysis. If we are using albuminuria, A1 is albumin less than 30 mg per day, which is normal, and A2 is 30 to 300 mg per day, which is moderate, and A3 is anything greater than 300 mg per day, which is severe. Still on diagnosis. You can move a step further after staging to know the exact cause while looking for the cause. So you can have radiological investigation done using ultrasound, CT, or MRI. You can have biopsy doing histopathological investigation with that. Have your electrolyte assays, arterial blood gases, analysis, complete blood count, glucose, and fasting lipid. Still on diagnosis, you can have your urine microscopy, culture and sensitivity done, urine and serum protein, estimated glomerular filtration rate. Actually, you have 24 hours protein to be analyzed. Blood rare nitrogen, creatinine, thorough history, and complete physical examination. On treatment, generally you treat all reversible causes. After thorough diagnostic investigations. And our target is to slow down the progression, treat all possible complications, and of course, GFR will be used to determine the type of medications and dosages. Renal replacement therapy, more dialysis or peritoneal dialysis, and kidney transplant will be the best treatment ever. So, like I said, transplant will be the best. Renal replacement therapy with hemodialysis, and of course, you get advanced directives because things may change in course of treatment. The individual might become you know, non verbal, and you'll be able to still carry out required uh, assistance based on advanced directives already given either with substitute decision maker available or someone with power of attorney. Assessment of the quality of life, then we have to know this. Chronic kidney disease or end stage renal disease increases the chances of mortality and cardiovascular disease related deaths. Therefore, we have to take measures to prevent cardiovascular diseases in chronic kidney disease or end-stage renal diseases. Chronic kidney diseases will progress to end-stage renal disease in many and eventual mortality. Okay, in palliative treatment, that is to the patient that is already giving up, not opting for transplant and so on. So, okay, advice, no salt intake, Low protein intake, low potassium rich foods like bananas, tomatoes, potatoes, and so on. Support groups for end stage renal disease where pieces of information can be exchanged. Try exercise as may be tolerated, and of course, have a family meeting seeking family support for the affected individual. There will likely be pain. And we need to be careful while dealing with that. I have cautiously put down some stuff here and I've used color 
to denote no, or pass across my message. Some certain medications, opioids, are safe in end stage renal disease, and that's fentanyl or methadone. Cautiously, cautiously use a remorphone or oxycodone. Please avoid morphine or codeine in anyone on dialysis. Never, never use my peridine. What are the possible complications? Monary edema because of retention of fluid, abstention, osteoporosis, hepatic failure, erectile dysfunction, pericarditis from remi pericarditis, bleeding from remian clotting platelets, increased susceptibility to infection, and anemia. Still on complications, hyperkalemia. You can check my channel for my presentation on hyperkalemia because the value of the potassium will determine our intervention. It's not everybody that is a candidate for calcium gluconate or salbutamol or insulin or glucose or even chiasolate. It depends and some will even need Modalities right away. Generalized body swelling, scissors, malnutrition, complications of dialysis, and possible death. Prevention. We have to screen for diabetes mellitus. Treat already diagnosed diabetes mellitus. Treat hypertension. Work on decreasing the weight, increase exertion. Stop indiscriminate medication usage. Still on prevention, please keep all the street drugs out. As a matter of fact, you can check my channel for some street drugs because I've made presentation on them like cocaine, fentanyl, amphetamine, cannabis, and I've even made presentation on smoking cessation and alcohol check so that you're able to get you know, some facts about possible risk factors that you're facing, including vaping. Stop using mercury and gold. Stop smoking. Treat acute kidney injury and chronic kidney disease so as to prevent the progression to end-stage renal disease. And of course, we need to embark on a good follow-up. And with that, I've come to the end of this very presentation. Transplant is the best treatment, the best intervention in the face of end-stage renal disease. Remember to subscribe and share. I appreciate it. Thank you.